All right, so welcome back. This is part two of the, our series for the 2023 Mexican Immigration Update with Sergio Santana. Sergio, welcome back. In part one, we talked about some updates, general updates that everybody should be aware about. But in this video, we wanted to bring up some questions from our viewers. And so we'll just jump right into that. Yes, yes. Question one comes from Dave Sinclair. We all know Dave Sinclair. He's, he's a regular, uh, he appears regularly in our videos. But uh, Dave Sinclair says, thanks for the opportunity, guys. My question is this. We have to renew our temporary visas for the first time in October. What is involved in the process, i.e. forms and fees, and how long does it take? Disclaimer, we use Sergio and Alicia to get our temporary visas. Yes, that's right. Um, I just want to say thank you, Dave Sinclair, for the ask. Uh, and I think I already gave him the information by uh, email, uh -huh. but however, I will explain it. Sure. Okay? It's the, the renovation. This is really simple. The most important right now uh, in this process is the law gives us 30 days before your resident temporal expire for can apply for the renovation. I don't remember exactly when the resident temporal of David expired, but it's in October. So let's say the five, let's say 10 of October. Okay, October 10. The law gives us 30 days before the resident temporal expire. So we can do the process between the 11 of September and the 9 of October. Okay, in middle in the middle of that days, we can go to the immigration department and apply the renovation for three years. The documents, well, the documents are the same as the first time. There is a format online request. There is a letter request. There is a basic information. There is a private letter of um, privacy of your information uh, for let them use your personal information for this process. A few copies, passport, resident. The payment, if I remember correctly, is 9,000 pesos for the three years renovation. Um, we can do the renovation for one year, for two years, or for three years. But of course, re we recommend three years. Why? You don't have to see us every year, pay us more time, and you don't have to go to the immigration office every year. And at the end, you pay less money if you just complete the three years in, in, one, este, in one step, in one time. So este, it's just that the important is just arrived here. I recommend between one and two weeks before the resident temporal expired for just have a little bit of time for prepare the documents. And it's the same. In one day, we go to the immigration department, we complete the process, and if the machine is working, the same day, we leave with the resident temporal, uh, the new one, for good for another three years, in your hand. When you go to those offices and, and at the immigration office and you're standing in line, do you ever see somebody who's trying to do it by themselves without a lawyer? Uh, well, yes. Uh, well, uh, honestly, uh, the most uh, person I see who they don't go with somebody who is help them, uh -huh. I see them, but I see them in the back on the line, uh -huh. and they don't. Uh, the first situation they have is they don't get a turn. They because, just don't even get a turn. Exactly. Yeah. They, they appear at six a.m. or seven a.m. and they was thinking was uh, early and That's was good. Yeah. But. Uh, right now they are just giving us 24 turns okay and they let us so there's a limit yes there yeah. is just 24 turns uh -huh. and uh, just make a little bit of numbers they let us make three procedures for day yeah. if there is a family we can do it four or five okay. but normally three procedures there is 24 numbers if the first attorney appear at 3 a.m mm -hmm and get three or four numbers oh, I see. with the first five, seven attorneys. It's over. It's over yeah. at 4, 4.35 a.m. Yeah. And all the people after that time, they don't even, they don't get number. Right. Plus that, 
when they go, they don't go with the documents ready. Yeah. They don't go with the copies, with the right payments, with este, so. So a situation could be somebody who's trying to do it on their own, shows up 5, 6 a.m. Maybe they get a turn, maybe. And then once they do, they're missing a document. That's right. And they have to do it all over again. I, I have a, I already saw a few person who didn't want to help, didn't want to hire anyone. I don't, I, I don't, I don't say in, they have to hire me. Right. It's just a general recommendation it, to hire someone to help you because I see person who went five times. Oh my the gosh. first time they go at six, seven, they don't get turned. Yeah. That next time they go at five or four, they get turned, but they don't have the documents ready. Right. The next time they go at 3 a.m., they get turns, they have the documents ready, but maybe they missed the payment, they did a payment co incorrectly, este, they don't go with the uh, visa or, or card uh, for do the payments, and este, or they forget something, they have to go again. Sometimes I I saw few people who they is the third fourth time and they they go uh -huh. they complete all the process uh -huh. they spend like five hours or seven hours per day. Sure. They already spend 20, 30 hours. Uh -huh. They complete the process uh -huh. and when they complete the process they didn't know they have to go clean. They don't have to go with uh, rings with things oh, okay. and they have to go to the doctor in that moment uh -huh. for cut oh my god that things like, for can complete like the process uh, no 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 <laughs> when is when you have rings yeah. or something like that right they don't take you a picture okay it, so oh my gosh. they didn't know that yeah and they complete the process like in four or five times they go and and uh, in the immigration department they don't want to take a picture of them sure. and finish the process. Yeah. And they was crying and, sure. and, and, and went to the doctor. They cut everything and they come back. And so for a lot of things. Don't is... get butchered, hire Sergio. Ah! So the next question comes from Malacone Manning. He actually has a YouTube channel. So you guys want to check that out. I'll put, put that in the description. He says, he asks, I recently posted a video of our journey on my YouTube channel, Malico Manny. We are renewing in December, 2023. Our question is, can we step up and step up and change up to permanent residents since we meet the economic solvency requirements? Gracias. Okay, perfect. So uh, yes, of course, you can change from perman from temporal to permanent without wait the four years as a resident temporal. Of course, it's possible. You have two options. The first option is in the Mexican consul. Uh, in simple words, is do it again. As, as when you do it, when you get your resident temporal in the Mexican consul in your country, if you, in this time, you are already pensioned, and you qualify for the permanent directly, if you are in your country and you want to do it over there, is one option. Este, I think the second option is more simple, but let me explain you this one too. Uh, as I explained you before, for qualify, the law gives us these two options for the Mexican consul. You have to prove, first, you have to be pensioned. That's the most important requirement. Be pension, be retired. Okay, plus that, you have to prove you have an income of 103,000 pesos. In a US dollar, uh, in today, more or less, will be, you have to prove, let's say, 5,000, seven five thousand seven hundred uh, us dollar income monthly income for the last six months that's one option the another option is investments or safe if you have a balance in your bank account safe 
or investments of 232,000 US dollar for the last 12 months, for the last year, you can apply for the resident permanent directly. This is in the Mexican consuls in your country, okay? And uh, that's it. Do, do uh, apply an appointment, present your documents, your formal request, um, your picture, passport, color site, uh, $55 for the right payment, and go to the, point, uh, to the appointment, present the documents, and get your visa and your passport as a permanent, and the same process as you did when you get the temporal. Come here, get a stamp your visa, uh, complete the process in the immigration department, and get your card. That's the normal way. But there is another in really interesting way, and I think it's more simple, here in Mexico, okay? Here in Mexico, if you want to change from temporal to permanent without wait the four years, we have this option. Is the first requirement is the same. You have to be retired, you have to be pension. Plus that, you need to prove 500, but not salary minimum days as in the consul. This is UMAS. Here, if you are pension and you want to change from temporal to permanent here in the immigration department, you need to prove you are pension and plus that you have a monthly income of 3,000 3, US dollar for the last six months, monthly income. Monthly. The half okay. that you have to prove in the Mexican consul. Or is a, one, a balance in your bank account saves or investments of 150 uh, 150,000 mm -hmm. US dollar for the last year. Okay. The same is more or less the half that you have to prove in the Mexican consul. If you prove this balance in investments or saves, you can change from temporal to permanent without wait the four years, the normal four years. As you know, if you complete the four years as a temporal, you can change mm -hmm. to permanent here in the immigration department without show incomes, without show investments, without go to the consul, just as a time, as a resident temporal. But is that if you, for some reason, you want to sell your property or you are in some project and you need more fast your permanent, this is the way to do it. And uh, the only thing is in the Mexican consul, you don't have to translate all your bank statements, investment, savings, uh, monthly income, and if we do the process here in the immigration department uh, in Mexico, we need to translate that document, okay? So moving right along to Joseph Hertzellers. And Joseph Hertzellers, he asks, thanks, we have taken possession of our condo in Mexico, but since we do not have an HOA yet, we have not closed. How do we prove ownership to the immigration office in the United States? Okay, well, I wish, I love get just good and uh, positive uh, answer, but in this case, it is not possible. The consul uh, don't have that option. It's really clear, the law is really clear, and they want the title. So the title is your trust. If you don't have your trust, if you, if you don't finish your close of your property and you don't have your trust, uh, the consul will not accept you uh, another document. Maybe they can accept the contract, but at the end, the only thing who proves you are the 100% owner of that property is the trust. So until you don't make the close and you don't have your title on your hand, it, it is not possible to get your resident by that way. Joseph has another question. When we go to our immigration office in the United States, what documents should we bring? Okay, uh, well, I stay, as I say before, I, stay, I will give to Paul a document, explain the different ways you, you can qualify for get your visa in the Mexican consul in your country. The normal in general is monthly income, uh, depends the amount of the monthly income and if you're pension, if you can get a permanent or just a temporal, uh, investments or saves, the same, depending if you're pension and the amount you have 
in your balance of sales or investments if you qualify for the temporal or just for the uh, for the permanent or just for the temporal or have a property in Mexico este have a uh, investments in a in a Mexican corporation or have a business in Mexico if you have a business a bar a restaurant and you have three employments with all the um, uh, social security number vacation all all the benefits the law este the law obligate to you to give it to them if you have three of that mexican uh, you can get a resident temporal okay. but however i will give paul the information so sh uh, he can share with you that yeah i'll put that uh in a download link in a dropbox link in the description of this video and well plus that uh, of course uh, i mentioned you have to go with one of that proof you qualify investment saves monthly income property in mexico this different option plus that you need to go with your passport with the format a uh, formal request with two pictures a passport site color with 55 60 dollars for the right payment and este if you're married or you have kids I recommend you go with your marriage certificate and birth certificate so you can share if you qualify for your resident but your wife is they don't uh, you just can prove she's uh, she depends on you and just as the plus the way you go you, you have to prove another thousand US dollar in balance in the investments or saves for the last 12 months so you can prove you can pay or este, your wife or your kids are depending on you. Each, each part of the family who's gonna get a resident by depending on you, you need to prove 1,000 US dollar investments or sales for the last 12 months. But that's it. The next question comes from Sophie. Do temp residents, and then she put four years through the RDV program, need to apply for the tax number RFC even if they don't work nor have a business in Mexico yet. Okay, uh, well, that's what we was talking about right now with my mom. Este, right now, at this moment, it's like a recommendation. Mm -hmm. The law is already asking us, as a Mexican or resident, uh, if we have 18 years old or more, we need to have the tax number. Right now, until right until today, is a recommendation, but in one point will be an obligation. Okay, okay? is is like they are giving us a little bit of time for complete that obligation without any fine or any any problem. Okay, but next will be a hundred percent obligation. Okay, uh, what about this? Este, if you get your RFC, your tax number, you don't gonna have any obligation. It's just for have you register you in the system. If you get your tax number, you don't gonna have obligation of declarate of or paying taxes or do something in the system until you put an activity in the system and you start making money from Mexico you need to have your accounter and make your declarations and depends your activity and depends your incomes that kind of obligation and that kind of percent of taxes you will have to pay but just for having your tax number you cover that obligation and you don't get uh, anything uh, you don't have to pay nothing or or have more obligation than that that's a recommendation is have it so is it a good thing for people to have that RFC number? Yes, of course. Actually, uh, right now, almost all the banks, mm -hmm. if you want to open a bank account, they are asking you that uh, RFC number. And plus that one of the best benefits is the tax benefits. As you know, uh, if you are just a tourist and you sell your house, you will have to pay a lot of taxes. Yeah. And este, if you're a resident and you have your tax number, you can prove you are paying your taxes, you are registering the system, mm -hmm. and you can apply a benefit. 
and, and save a lot of money in taxes okay. when you will sell your property. So yes, of course, it's 100% a, a recommendation. Get your tax number. Yeah. Uh, for example, if you buy a property of 3 million pesos, uh -huh. like five, 10 years ago, uh -huh. right now you will sell that property for 8 million pesos. Uh -huh. So first, you will actualize the amount of 3 million pesos for the um, inflation. ¿Cómo se dice inflation en inglés, amor? Inflation. The inflation. And you first actualize the 3 million mm -hmm. uh, of five, 10 years ago. Today, maybe it is 3 million and a half or 4 million pesos. Sure. So after that, you actualize that 3 million to the value of today will be maybe 4 million pesos. So the proof, the benefit, the money you will win is, mm -hmm. let's say you will sell in 8 million. Sure. So you will win the 4 million pesos. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay the 30% of that uh, money you are making, you are winning, yeah. that's 4 million. So 30% of that is more than 1 million pesos. It's more 1 million to 200, uh, yes, 1 million 200,000 uh, pesos. Yeah. So it's a lot of it's money. Lot. And if you have that tax benefits, you're just gonna pay like 1,020, 120,000 pesos. Okay. Like 10 times less. Yes. So of course. So okay. that's why everybody who buys a, a real estate here in Mexico, yes. they immediately need to go and get their residence, right? Yes, actually a lot of my clients, when they are este, making the close of the property, the agents este, apply the tax number. A lot of notaries, mm -hmm. banks, notaries, uh, when they are making the trust, uh -huh. They don't let finish that until uh -huh. they get the tax number. Oh, that's smart. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, well, uh, this is a relative new yeah. for the change of the, of the law. Before it was like a more an option sure. and a, a strategy. Yeah. But right now it's like a more necessary. Sure. Uh, when you get your property, apply your tax number. And after apply your tax number, mm -hmm. you have to apply in the CFE at that tax number in your bill okay so then when you sell it what that's one of the best proof you can do for apply for the benefit it's uh, like a tip so ehc i don't know what that stands for but they asked i plan on using a facilitator in mexico when completing canje uh, is it advisable to utilize a facilitator for the U.S. portion of, a, for, of applying for residency? Added note, my Spanish skills are very rudimentary. Okay, uh, first of all, I, este, I understand in the Mexican consuls who make the interview speak English. Yeah. And este, I, will, I will be really honest. The Mexican consuls don't recognize any kind of attorney or representative. So um, the maximum uh, uh, some attorney or consultant can help you in your process in the Mexican consul is just what I'm doing right now. Explain you the ways you can qualify investment, saves, property in Mexico, uh, business, este, I can review your format owner request, fill it correctly. I can review, uh, you go with the pictures ready, with the right payment ready, with the way you will prove you qualify ready. But at the end, we cannot do more. I already make a lot of calls and, and emails and a lot of things for make appointments and being touched with the consuls. And the only thing they told me is Sergio, tell to your clients, Send us an email with the passports, with the formal request ready, with the way they will prove they qualify, investment, sales, any way you will qualify, and applying an appointment for, for este, a visa. But that's why I just charge 1,000 pesos for explain you the ways, for check your documents, for check the formal request, but that's it. You, you have to make the appointment by yourself and you have to go to the appointment in the Mexican consuls by yourself. 
so I don't think it makes sense to uh, pay more than that uh, 1,000 pesos. If some attorney or person we will charge you 5,000, 10,000 or more for guarantee you that, it's not possible. No one can guarantee you a visa in the Mexican consul. Well, maybe just if they have a really good contact, but uh, until this point, I don't know anyone. And for be honest, it's not possible. We can explain you the ways, we can prepare the documents, we can check if you go with everything ready, but at the end, you have to complete the process. Okay. So yes, you have to do it over there. And when you come back here to Mexico for, to Mexico for complete the process, is that when we come in. Uh, you just have to show your visa. Uh, sorry, okay. uh, you just have to show your visa in the airport. Get the stamp your visa, and after that we take care of everything. Preparation of documents. Go to the immigration office. You just sign a few papers. Take, uh, put fingerprints, the pictures, and receive your card. So that's that's where we we can help you. So Derek asks. Is it possible to obtain permanent residency if I meet the financial requirements, but I'm not retired? It is. It is possible, but it's difficult. Okay. Uh, why? Because you have uh, so just, I think one, there is two options. If you are not pension, the only way for get your resident permanent directly from tourist to permanent is if you have a Mexican child. If you have a Mexican child, if, you're, if you, uh, your wife uh, and you are pregnant, you come to Mexico, you have your kid here, I can give to you that permanent directly for that son. And after, uh, another option is, is just that, have that resident temporal and wait the four years and then change to permanent. So it's just that, because if you go to the Mexican consul, they will ask you, you have to be pensioned, you have to be retired. And if you want to change from temporal to permanent here in Mexico by income, solvents, investment saves, it's the same. You have to be retired on pension. So your only two options is that, have a child, Mexican child, so you change directly to permanent, or wait the four years as a temporal for can change to permanent. That's the, so Very that's good. why we say it's like a privilege. Be yeah. permanent is not really simple. So the next question comes from Ojas Layer. What's the process to renew temporary residency? I think I already explained this yeah, with we, a bit, that, but yeah. it is that it's just you have to come back to Mexico and inside of the 30 days before your resident temporal expired, and it's just that, uh, prepare a couple of documents, go to the immigration department. If you do the process, if you did the process in the PV department, uh, immigration department in Puerto Vallarta, you will have to make an appointment uh, for make sure they give us the appointment before your resident temporal expire for complete the process. And if you we will do the process in Nuevo Vallarta, just uh, make sure you come before your resident temporal expire for can go to complete the process in the immigration office okay. and and is that uh, is a formal request letter request uh, basic information right payment copy of the passport copy of the resident and, and is that uh, a few documents uh, go to the immigration department it's like the first time este, but the only thing is more simple is we can use your information from the system for prepare the documents, but it's the same. We have to go complete the process and get the new card. Hey everybody, if you've made it this far in today's video, that means that you're getting pretty serious about moving to Mexico. So I wanted to tell you guys about the Mexico Relocation Guide. Some of the benefits of the guide include connecting with immigration facilitators, trusted realtors, bank facilitators, international moving companies, expat health insurance brokers, private relocation tour guides, and so much more. Think of the guide like having a Sergio Santana in your back pocket for all things Mexico. Yes, yes. So pick up the Mexico relocation guide, follow the link in the description below. The next question is from Tutu, that's my mom. So she's got a bunch of questions for you. That's okay. Uh, so when applying for the RFC, Mexican tax ID, 
Is it better to not use your own property as the address and why? Okay, este, honestly, it's better use your own property because as I say, one of the most important and big benefits for have your tax number is the tax benefits. Save taxes when you will sell your property. So don't have sense, put, take your, make your address with another address because at the end, if you want to use your benefits, tax benefits, when you will sell your property, you will have to change from that address to your real address that one you will sell and save taxes so actually i already have a lot of clients who they buy their condos buy their real estate and their agents ask us the tax number but the condition for let us make the their tax number the rfc was take the tax number with the address who's they gonna buy in the address of the condo or house they are buying in that moment. So uh, the recommendation is uh, to take your tax number with the address with your real property. Yeah, be, the, the reason why she asked that question was because a real estate agent that we were talking to recommended that she use somebody else's address. It could be anywhere, even if it's like in Mazatlan or somewhere else completely. And we were just puzzled by why that would be beneficial. Um, and we really did, we didn't know why they were recommending that. Honestly, I don't, I don't see a uh, benefits. Uh, okay. Maybe este, mm -hmm. normally if you get your tax number is because you will rent a property uh -huh. in a digital platforms, you will rent the Airbnb or something like that, or you want a tax benefits, este, but at the end, for that things, you need to have the, the address and your tax number have to be the address you will make the business. I think it makes sense, huh? But este, I, will, I will be really honest too. Maybe we should review with an accounter. Maybe it's a, a strategy uh -huh. or some plan of work they are okay. special making. But in general, in my experience about what the another real estate agent asked me, for my clients, for make the closest property, the trust, uh, they are asking the exactly address they are buying or they are living. And one more from Tutu. She asks, is there any other paperwork or numbers I need to get after I get residency? Well, as an obligation, no. Uh, if you can, yes, you can get your social security number your card of the third age forget a lot of this coin in taxes or payment or service este you can get your license drive you can get your a bank account you can get permit to work but as an obligation until the moment is just the tax number so the recommendation is just after you get your resident temporal or permanent complete your tax number and that's it and with that, you don't wanna have any obligation in front of the tax department or pay taxes or, or make any kind of declaration. The, the only thing you can't do, it seems, is vote, right? Like, a, uh, yes. If you're, um, yes, if you need a naturalization for that, yes. Right. And I need to do that because I married a Mexican. And so that's my next step, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Well, could you help me with that? Of course, of okay. course. Right now, este, we right are. Now? No, we're a little oh. bit busy right now, but of course we can work in that. And Maybe in the there. summer. Yes. I'm going to become a Mexican. <laughs> well, Sergio, thank you very much. You are a wealth of information. <laughs> it's amazing, right? <laughs> I'm like, I cannot keep all that information straight. That's crazy. And so if you're looking for somebody to help you with Mexican immigration, I highly recommend using Sergio's service. Um, it's often in the comments in our YouTube channel about like the video that we did last time. A lot of people commented, I use Sergio's services. They're all, he's awesome. Everybody at the office is awesome. And so I just highly recommend it. And if you're going to like, maybe you don't live in Bucerias or Puerto Vallarta, highly recommend finding an expert to help you out. So it just saves you a ton of headaches uh, because doing any kind of 
uh, bureaucracy here in Mexico can be crazy. Yes. Like, and, and plus it's, there's the language barrier and all that. So you want to hire Sergio or somebody like Sergio, right? Yes, yeah. Mike and I sure, sure, something. Sure. And well, este, just for let you know, we plus the resident service, we are helping right now. I have a complete team of este, people who are really happy, are really happy to help you. Este, there is right now my cousin. She's right now the expertise and in charge of the immigration process. There is my fiance. She helped you with coordinate the marriage, mm -hmm. the, um, all the documents, yeah, actually, translation, a laboratory, all the documents what we need for that. Este, I, was say, I, saw, I saw you guys at Jim and Brenda's wedding, right? She's right off camera. And uh, she was, were you the officiant? Yes. Okay, she was the officiant. Yes. And she did an amazing job. And it was a, it was a beautiful wedding. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yes, we help you right now with the tax number, with permit to work, with regularization of vehicles, license, este, um, weddings. So yes, right now there is a, a little bit more people in the team uh, happy to help you. So just that. Just we right now add a few extra service for make a complete service for you. And that's it. We are here at your service. Yes, uh, I think one important thing I didn't mention is uh, this time when I went to the airport, uh, the immigration agents told me the resident temporal and permanent don't use the self-service machine. Okay, don't use it. That's just for tourists or Mexican. If you're a resident, temporal or permanent, don't use the self-service machine. Use the agent. If you are leave the country, go to the immigration department, get the stamp when you leave, and then you just get the regular line for get to the airplane. Don't use the self uh, machine, okay? Just that, really important. Okay, so if you guys like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and adios desde Bucerías.